Welcome back, Wash Up Walk Ons fans. Episode 366 of the Brady Ross Just Shit All Over Chris Hassel podcast. <laughs> uh, right before this episode aired in our Discord, or wait, right before we sat down to record this episode, somebody in our Discord uh, sent a screenshot of Brady Ross being the king, um, per usual, and letting Chris Hassel know exactly uh, what. He thinks about him, which was pretty awesome. So that's how I want to open this podcast, just giving a shout out to Brady Ross. You're the king. Love you, pal. Kluver. I th- it was on the uh, it was on the agenda. I didn't know that it was gonna open as the dude. It just happened. It's on my brain. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty great reply by old Buford there, huh? I like Buford, by the way. Drake called him Buford Ross. I like calling a, him Buford Ross every once in a while. In a DHT, and I, I think it fits him. Uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, he's uh, he's Dolphin training. He's over there with the Not undefeated. the voice of the Wildcats. Yeah. He's, he's and they're there. undefeated. Yeah. Yeah. They're going so, to the Dome. Shout out to the undefeated voice of the Wildcats. Because this is his first year. He's never lost. Wait, is... Are they the, is that what they are? The humble wildcats? Mm-hmm. Huh. They should have been something cooler. The humble. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought it was the wildcats though. Let's, let's check in on that. Let's just, I mean, I, it's not like there's a ton to talk about tonight. Anyway, I mean, the, <clears throat> like everybody thought I would did beat. They are the humble. Now, wildcats. Did you catch the end of that bucks game? Uh, no, I did. I did not. I, I, I saw that they won. I didn't watch it though. It was wild big. ending. Wild ending. Now, did you see the end of the LSU Bama game? I caught it on Only Twitter. in highlights because I was watching the World Series. Wow, you were watching the World Series over so, Alabama man, and LSU. I've so I'm not nearly, nearly, nearly. I've literally never Bama. heard you talk about baseball ever before in my life. It's only playoff sports, man. I'm not nearly bought in to any sport in particular as much as I am bought into playoff sports. I'd agree with that. It's the atmosphere. And like, I'm not a hockey fan either, but when playoff hockey is on, I'm tuned in and I'm going to find my favorite team that I'm going to try and ride with that one team through the playoffs because it is so much fun to be a playoff sports fan. And that's just what I am. I'm I'm a playoff sports fan above any particular sports fan. You know what you are. You I'm an anomaly. Straight. I'm an enigma. No, no, no. It makes you a bandwagon sports fan. Your oh, bandwagon. Sure, I guess. I'm, a, is I, at the time. I'm an athlete. I don't have to be. Dude, I'm training to be a mixed martial artist, man. Like, I want to fight people in a cage. I'm not. That has nothing I'm to not do with a, what I just I'm said. I'm not a normal <laughs> person. I, I'm not a normal person. I, I, I don't watch sports for that much. The only sport I watch is NFL football. This and is UFC. That, that that doesn't that doesn't disvalidate what I what I what I just said. Doesn't make that you. I'm a bandwagon sports he, fan. He was trying, right. Kevin. He was trying to. Yeah, he was and trying I'm to trying preface. to say that I'm not a normal sports fan. Yes, I'll agree with you that I'm yeah. a bandwagon sports fan because I'm not a real sports fan. You know what this means is now two out of three of us have said ah, we're not really sports guys. <laughs> You know, I think the content on this show, particularly over the last like year or so, is, has really it really shown that to the fans. I mean, and we're just continuing to make more money. Hey, and we're just getting fucking started, aren't we? Huh? <laughs> Are you eating the crispiest pizza? Is that what that is? Oh, that's, that's oh, jelly that's, toast, bitch. That's jelly <laughs> toast. You're eating jelly toast at 5.30 on a... And thick cut bacon, boy. Oh, my God. Drake is a crispy cook guy. Interesting. Well, I'm more of a, I'm more of a so, floppy. It's so thick that it also bends. Yeah. I like that. I, I, I'd eat that right there. Oh, well, thick, thick, thick cut is the only bacon that you can get. It's the only cut. You can, you can miss me with that thin shit. <laughs> Kevin with another one-liner. Miss me with the thin shit. Uh, yeah. Thing. Welcome in to the podcast, by the way. This is how we do things. If you've never been around here, if you are, I mean, tuning in at 366 uh, for your first episode, then 
Interesting, but welcome. Well, let me tell you something. The Ferences are still the goats. And God, we got a lot. Of, there's a lot of directions to take this. Okay, let's bring it back. Um, the boys are picking up some momentum that I didn't know that they were going to be able to pick up. Did you not know that though? No, no, I didn't believe. I truly didn't. Watching the first seven weeks, or you know, sporadically watching the first seven weeks, I truly did not believe that there was any momentum to be had. So going back to the tweet from Chad Lysico that Chris Hassel quote tweeted that Brady Ross responded to the original quote from Spencer Petrus, no offense to anybody in here. You guys had us dead two weeks ago, as did the whole outside world. It felt like. Yes, 100%. That, I just had him silently dead. I just was like minding my own business, just chalking it up. Yeah, you not being on the main show was Drake Kulik has the Iowa Hawkeyes dead. 100%. In the grave, Undertaker, but it, but they're not coming back. They're not rising up out of the coffin. Hey, and that's the luxury of the outside, boys, is we can have them fucking dead. And we can talk about it, and there's no consequence. It's fun. Oh, hey, it's fun as the media to say, boy, these boys suck. You know? No consequence. We turn off the hey, microphone. Put the film on. Tape don't lie. Them now, boys sucked for a lot of weeks. Now that's that's true. That's true. A lot of the stuff that they were putting on the on the tape didn't look so good. Looked like they were dead. Or they were playing like they were trying to die. But Lena, second half of this quote says that's not what football is. It's a week to week game. You keep working, and if you do things right, work hard, good results happen. And the one thing you do know, Drake. I don't disagree with that statement at all. The one thing you do know is that inside that building, they surely weren't working half ass. No. They were do they're doing their best. Though the offensive line looked like they were skipping practice. So and they were also skipping some of the meetings. But now but they, now they're blocking now, folks. Now they're there's only a little, giving up a little bit of pressure. And I think there's a little context to things here. I think we gotta I think you gotta take everything into account. Um, we've talked about it. I've mentioned it several times in the last couple weeks. And I think people are starting to come around to the idea that, wow, maybe this was more of a factor than we thought. Uh, the defenses we've played to this point are arguably stout. Um, if you're going to look at Illinois, Michigan, Ohio state, even Rutgers rushing defense, specifically South Dakota state, who, by the way, Northern Iowa damn near took down yesterday. <laughs> Um, but they are still undefeated and number one in the FCS and have a top five defense in that league. Iowa State's got a solid defense. I, Iowa State, I forgot to say Iowa State. They've got the best defense in the Big 12 statistically. I mean, fuck, we were up against some uh it it wasn't the it wasn't the row of teams we would have liked to see for a line that was young and could have used a little bit more easing in to this season. I am jealous as fuck, by the way, as you crunch that toast. Um, but hey, now, Northwestern, not as good. Purdue, we talked about it on the show last week. Another defense that has been spotty at, at best. Iowa offense starting to take advantage. And how about the boy, number two? Huh? How about this guy, Caleb Johnson? Huh? Tell you what, man. That guy can run the football, huh? Dolph wasn't lying, man. The kid, the kid can play ball, and he's by far and away our most effective back. Oh, he's the number one by far. I think there was a question earlier in the season. Is it going to be LaShawn? Is it going to be Caleb? Is Gavin going to be the guy? He was still in the mix, and I think the other two have struggled with some injuries. Caleb Johnson, boys, workhorse. Runs hard. Arguably. He's got good feet. Good feet. Guy sprouted for 75 yesterday. He looked dead to rights about half a second after the handoff. I mean, I'm not going to say that Purdue's good at tackling because they ain't. Holy shit, I bet Kevin's got some thoughts on that. <laughs> I mean, they don't do tackle circuit at Purdue. They don't know what it is in West Lafayette. But nonetheless, 
Those are the 11 they just, guys. They, that they, they, they scrap that, that period and they just do an extra period of seven on seven in pattern match. Correct. Correct. Which didn't seem to be working for him yesterday either. Um, and their game plan is Charlie throw Jones. the ball at Charlie Jones 30 times. And, and it's hey, actually got- insane how, how many targets that he gets. I think, like, I think he's a good receiver. Good. But I'm sorry, a, a 5'10 white dude should not be getting the ball thrown at him that often. Hey, tell Cooper Cup that. I think Cooper's like, what, at least 6'1? Yeah, he's um, taller. Tell you what, if I'm a Purdue fan, I'm a little bit worried because I think Iowa yesterday just exposed that their game plan offensively is kind of trash. Um, and they've gotten away with it a little bit. I mean, they're five and four now as well. It's not like they're murdering people out here. So I wouldn't say it's working the best. Well, I mean, their offense has been effective barring, um, you know, they had a, uh, you know, honestly, they, they've put up almost 30 points every game. I know. They, and I just, they, they beat, they beat Minnesota 20 to 10. And that was their lowest scoring outing. Every other game, you know, Wisconsin, they put up 24 against another good defense. But, you know, their offense has been able to put up points and maintain right. drives against some some good defenses out there. Um, I think we just got to give credit to, to this Iowa back seven. Did a great job matching routes all day. And I think the key thing, besides the absence of David Bell, was um, – which might be a huge unlike threat. in years past, we were able to get pressure on Aiden O'Connell this year. Yes, yes, we were. Ha. Yeah, we, you're right, Kev. We're not just talking about the back seven here. I mean, the let's just call it the back eleven. It's the back eleven. The back, the back eleven, the front eleven. <laughs> Make it the T-shirt. The eleven guys that we're sending out there. Yeesh, you know. Yeesh, dogs. If we Dude, ever could, you- Lucas Van Ness. Hercules, is a freakazoid, <laughs> and he can Who run. Who in the fuck is this guy? And where did we find him? And where can we find more? Because he is a monster. Um, and you see him run when he turns. When what? He turns, like Broski's running down QBs, and he's massive. He's built. You, uh, where do they have all those statues of the naked dudes with their little dicks out? Is that Greece? Is that Rome? Rome, either or pick your poison. He's carved like one of them, motherfucker. Yeah, ha. I mean, and I, I'm guessing, I'm not, I'm guessing it. it feels like getting hit by a brick of stone. Um, he was ranked last week as the 25th best college football player in America. Yeah. Checks out for real. It checks out. Yep. He can't leave this year because he's not a junior yet. So, but he's going to be the first team all American is what it sounds like. He's getting his, I mean, he's getting his. Um, So I guess I didn't realize he was getting that much recognition. Well, and he hasn't really until last week. They, some guy came out with his top 50 college football prospects and Van Ness just happens to be number 25. And I thought, well, God, I thought the same thing as you. I thought, well, shit. I mean, I know he's doing good. He's playing well for the Hawks, but is he that good? Dude, he's good. <laughs> he's that good, man. <laughs> let's let's just put it this way. He keeps he stays on the same proje- projection as he is right now. Trajectory. Trajectory. We're not gonna see his senior year. And no, that's no, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> um, I want to show you what. Him and uh, Nick Bosa are going to have very similar senior year stats. I think he's more of an Aiden Hutchinson than a than a Bosa. I just I mean sh- like the Bosa had zero tackles in his senior year, and he had about sixteen million dollars in the bank account. Uh, Nick Bosa, pick your poison. Neither of them stayed till their senior year. I was just going to say he also had a roughing the passer that was really important in our really game. important. <laughs> so hopefully, he led with his head. head. I really hope that Van Ness doesn't start uh, headbutting people. I do want to show you uh, quickly the Van Ness genetics. Um, 
so they're good, basically. And uh, it is what it is. Anyway. What, what, I don't know what you just showed me. I'm just showing you how beautiful his family is. Oh, oh, just, oh, okay. I mean, they were, I mean, they're, they're basically could all be models and he's out here playing for the Hawks on the D line. Uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to downplay the rest of this D line. Uh, Devon, uh, Deontay Craig dog, <laughs> Joe Evans from Ames, Iowa. Undersized he was a quarterback, right? Quarterback in high school. Dog. <laughs> Dog. Come on now. That's my favorite player. Imagine being a good enough athlete to play quarterback and defensive end. That's impressive. Well, you know who he is? He's Nate Meyer. He's the he's the closest thing we've had to Nate Meyer since Nate Meyer. He's undersized, but his motor is high. That's a, that's that's a really good um comparison i like that yeah except he's probably better he probably is better he's definitely better production wise nate meyer probably had a little bit nate meyer had something that nobody has and i don't know what you call it but i liked it um <laughs> I, nate meyer some, is like uh, he's got the most you know what? I'll- he, he, he's he's like we we you know up at the lake house we had a we had like a, a gator tractor type deal yeah. To, yeah to like help out with chores around around there and stuff sure the thing never ran out of gas I swear to God we had that lake house twenty years <laughs> we filled it up twice <laughs> that's what Nate Meyer was the dude just did not run out of gas he couldn't kill him yeah he couldn't kill him. Bro, I remember. I I remember. This is the wildest conversation I've ever heard one of our teammates have with Coach Doyle. I've never heard somebody talk to Coach Chris Doyle like Nate Meyer did in his senior year. Oh, my God. It's one of those. I was awkward because I was in. It was awkward for me because I was in the vicinity of this happening. Coach walked (laughs) out. We're in a we're in a stretch, a Friday stretch, right? We're about to go fast Friday. So you do your little primer and we go out. We're about to run through the 28 minute, whatever. And Nate's a little late or, you know, he's not like late, but he, he walks in two minutes early, which is late. And Doyle starts chirping him, right? And Nate <laughs> sits down on the rower or not the rower, the roller, uh, the foam roller. And I'm right next to him. And Nate goes, what the fuck are you talking about, man? And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Is this – it's going to happen? This is happening? No one says that. No one says that to Coach Doyle. And Coach coach starts, like, kind of laughing a little bit. And I'm like, oh, he's on another level. Oh, this is a level that I didn't know was unlockable. Listen, bud, it wasn't a secret that he was crazy. It's not just us three that were just like, oh, yeah, did you – hey, did you hear the secret? Did you know this? Dude, the coaches knew too, all right? He had like six weeks left in the program. Yeah. Coach Doyle didn't want to die that day. And he was playing well too, right? So so, so Coach Doyle, he, he gets a little closer. He comes over. He's like, Senior year, huh? You can just show up fucking late, do whatever you want. Like, and he and he still got a little bit of like ang- angry in him. Like Doyle's not, he's he's kind of playing with it, but he's not happy. And, and <laughs> I'll never forget it. Nate goes, he goes, Coach, I fucking hate this place. <laughs> 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 he leans back and starts rolling his ass and he goes coach i fucking hate this place <laughs> <laughs> and if you would have seen me if there would have been a side camera right this the the in a movie the 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 camera cuts there's a different angle and there is tyler kluver sitting on the rower next to nate meyer my mouth was on the floor i was like I, I was like, uh, it was like a, a fucking grenade just got tossed into the thing, and I just watched seventeen of my teammates die. It's like I was that shocked, and he keeps they keep jarring at each other, and I was like, okay, all right. So there's, and it's like I just third year in the program. No, was he a year older than us or two years older than us? Two years, twenty fifteen. Okay, so it was fifteen, and, th- and by right, this no, time he might have been a year older, but didn't redshirt. 
yeah, whatever. It was 2015, and of course the season's going real well at this point, so Coach Doyle don't have too much to be mad about. So, you know, everything's fun and games. And I realized that day, I haven't made it yet. I, I'm not there. I'm not on that top level. Senior, the the seniors no have shit, something that dude. He was the starting defensive end, and he was crazy. You were never going to get on that level. But but every senior finds well, as long as you're, you know, you're doing your shit right. Every senior finds that that new level with the coaching staff. I mean, Kevin and I hardly even played did spring ball our senior year, and yeah, I was Drake, on partial retirement. And Drake, you've talked about how BF had you on fucking. 30 percent reps just so you were good for game day <laughs> Dude, I mean, he knew that i was capable of running into people hard yeah so man i'll never forget that that's just a little a sentiment about nate meyer but uh nate is also a guy who similar to brady would tell chris hassel on twitter uh that he doesn't like him um the response by the way i i, I like chris hassel um i i've known him I haven't known him, but I've known who he was since my high school days in Central Iowa. He's from Iowa. Muscatine, right? Yeah, he's from Muscatine. He's yeah, he doesn't fuck with me. So He doesn't fuck Chris with you? Hassel, no. Chris Hassel's never even acknowledged my existence, which, I mean, who cares? Like, I'm not a guy that gets butthurt over that. But if we're two dudes from Muscatine and we know what Muscatine is like, like, I mean, eat my nuts if you're not going to even acknowledge my existence. I don't. How do, how, do you, how do you want him to acknowledge you right now? Yeah, You're not on Twitter. I've, no, I've hit him. I've hit him up on Twitter before, like when I had Twitter. I know this. I hit him up a, like a. It's probably two years now, at least. Uh, it was before the Doyle stuff happened at Iowa, so it, it would have been before that. It's been probably three years now to get him on the podcast, and we were going to have him on, and he agreed. But then right around that time, I think he got his his work got crazy, or he got signed to CBS. It might have been right after. He, Right around the time he got fired from ESPN and then signed to CBS, I'm not sure. Um, I yeah, like. I guy. used to try and hit him up on social media. Um, okay, well maybe he's got beef with you. Maybe we can, Chris, if you're listening, or if you if this gets sent to you, hey, let's you know let's, let's settle the beef. And the beef would be in the out again. Well, no, it would be no, whatever they're sure putting not. in those. What it'd be whatever beef? they're putting in those mage rights in in uh, Muscatine. That would be the beef. Fact. Um, even though Taylor's remarks done is better. Um, he says, not a fan of this. Chris Hassel says, not a fan of this. And I don't know why he wouldn't be a fan of that. Um, I don't see anything wrong with what Spencer said, especially because he was asked about what this does for the team moving forward and, and kind of their mindset, I believe is, is what he was answering the question with. Um, and also, as a media guy, I listen to Chris's podcasts on the Iowa Everywhere Network. He does one with Chris Williams, who does the Iowa State State Perspective, uh, which Iowa State finally climbed out of their five-game skid and beat West Virginia this weekend. Good for them. Um, and I like their podcast. I think he's really good at what he does. But if you're going to sit on a podcast like we do, like he does, like everybody else does, for these first eight weeks of the season – and uh, chirp about how the guys on the inside are sucking it off. Then when one of them and when they have a go and have a good day and one of them says, yeah, this is huge. Like you guys had us dead and we just keep working and, you know, good things happen. You can't be mad when one of those guys says that. That's like, not yeah. even a chirp, dude. I know. That's what That's I'm saying. Is this is not like I saw the comments like uh, clap back, chirp it. It's not, it's just pure facts. Like people were writing the, this team off two weeks ago. I think the people who don't, who are really bad at finding, uh, at finding the context, you know, they don't look for the whole conversation. They just see the quote on Twitter. What they see is it coming out of Spencer's mouth and they automatically relate it to, Oh, Spencer thinks he's done something now, which is not what he's implying at all. Um, he's just talking about the team and how things have been going, going on the inside. And I think that if you are a person who were who was somehow offended or butthurt by Spencer's comment, then you have some work to do. Let me, let me put it this way. If you are a media person who's butthurt by that comment, try being on the other side of the line. Yeah, just saying yeah. to people talk shit about you for the last two fucking years. Yeah, seriously. Try being Spencer. You get that's, that's the thing. You would come if to you, work with a gun. If someone has a problem with this comment, anybody who does, 
you've clearly weeded yourself out as someone who could have never been on the inside. Not that that's what you're trying to prove yourself as, but let's just put it that way. Um, so Chris says, not a fan of this. Brady Ross responds, not a fan of you. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> that is a clapback. We want to talk about a clapback. That's a clapback. And Brady Ross just throwing bones. Brady right? Ross, not very active on Twitter, but when he is, not, it's a it's a treat. Oh, it's he's he's a everything that Brady Ross does is a treat. And he's had a few treats. He's a national treasure. He used to look like a treat. Ah, <sighs> anyway, Iowa gets it done, boys. You can finally talk about this game. Twenty six minutes in, but who would have thought? I. I think I had it in I had it in my mind. I, I even had it in my betting account. Uh shout out to DRF Sports, IA.drf.com if you want to sign up. Uh unfo- I'm I'm really sorry about it. The the boost of the week. Two weeks in a row. Lost. Uh betting's hard, man. Betting's hard. We were four for four before that. And uh the last two weeks it hasn't hit. But DRF, shout out to the boys. They have been making it happen and giving the walk-ons a boost all year long. They also have promotions all the time and as well as the educational sort of logistical part of DRF. Go check them out. The hometown sports book, the walk on sports book. Um, I had it in one of my bets, Iowa money line. So I thought there was a definite chance here, especially because of the weather. Um, but 24 to three, 24 to three, that was probably not in anybody's bingo card. Um, Kev, initial thoughts on overall. I know we kind of talked about keys to the game. Good defense, great defense, arguably. Three points. I know Phil Parker loves that. And uh, guess what? We won the turnover battle. Won the turnover battle. Um, I, I, you know, can't really say that we exactly earned it. They, the O'Connell sailed a couple passes. We were able yep. to take advantage of them. But sure. kudos to our boys for for – making the plays, you know, Benson, that was actually a pretty good catch for him. Hell of a catch. Hell job. of a catch. Um, did you watch the game break? I did. Oh, wow. wow. Look at you. Uh, and then on the other side of the ball, I think we did a good job, especially Spencer of taking care of the boss, especially yep. in those windy conditions. Um, mm-hmm. You know, of his like 12 incompletions, I think he threw away like seven of them. Yeah. Which, given the way the game was going, we just needed to take care of the ball. And I think he did it. And I think overall Spencer played pretty well. Um, yep. he, he, he just took what the defense gave him, made a couple of nice hot reads to, uh, to mm-hmm. regain. He let him run out and beat man coverage. Had a couple of nice throws to Laporta. Um, mm-hmm. I think he, there's only one throw to Lachey that he really missed. That would have been yep. a nice little 15 yard gain. Um, o- overall, I think Spencer played, pretty pretty well offensive line made an improvement still a lot of room there um yep i don't know if you saw this too but dude the snaps are still just Slow. not on cadence i don't know what it is i don't know if logan is holding on to it or what but goddamn spencer is like stuck there for right exactly yeah i mean that's something that's got got to be addressed here it's, lines it's, moving it's been an all season thing and it, it throws off timing it makes you know, Drake, you, you can talk about how important timing is on offensive football plays, but when it's off even half a second, it can fuck things up. Especially when you're zone blocking because everybody has to be working in sync because you're not on guys for all that long if you're moving to the second level. So it's not like it's just you versus the guy in front of you and, you know, when you go, you go. <clears throat> if the guy to the left or right of you is on a different step than you, the whole play is fucked. Um, I want people, you two specifically, who know more schematically about football than I do. Not that you guys are Phil Parker or anything, but um, by any means, I'm an idiot. I got a question on the post game show that I was honest, or was it the post game show? Yeah, it was the post game show that I was honestly kind of unequipped to answer, and I did my best. But um, when we have success offensively. People tend to have this idea that, oh, Brian got more aggressive. And I don't think that's true. 
the what I think is ran the plays better. Okay, they so I was played better. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, that, when when they run sixteen, there wasn't a three technique in the backfield uh, on the run path. Like, yeah, they played better. My it, so so I, I got this in a call and a couple DMs. Like, hey, seems like Brian's opening up the playbook. Seems like we're being more aggressive. And I'm telling people, man, I don't know for sure but i don't think so it's my i, I don't know if i that, saw a single play we haven't run before i don't, that's I don't I even see. think we had a, a yeah i was about to say that we don't have a play run okay. that was good anything other than standard because my answer to those people was i don't think that we're we're getting aggressive at all i think we're running a lot of the same plays that we've been running it just looks more aggressive when we're getting 12 yards instead when of you're sacking. executing yeah for yeah. sure. Okay. That was my answer to those like people. On those tight end stick routes when we were hitting them for first downs. So we're not just now punting. It's first and ten again. Seems more aggressive. Makes the game a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. That makes me feel better because I don't I don't have the eye to kind of subconsciously think back after 60 minutes of football and go, huh. You know what? Brian Dude, actually called. I, I want to like make fun of these fans for having wet brain because like in what world does an offensive coordinator who has no, no, no success in the season to like boost his confidence in what world does he just now open up the playbook and just start throwing fucking unicorns and, and buckets of gold. Like that's wet brain thought process. Dude, that's another T-shirt. Unicorns and buckets of gold. That's <laughs> that's what we, Iowa offense. Unicorns and buckets of gold. Um, okay, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. That doesn't make any sense. And again, I think it it comes back to this thing. And again, here's here's where the walk-ons are going to patronize you as a fan. Or I won't even lump Kevin and Drake in there with me, but this is the way I'm going to describe it. Um. I was just referencing that one question. No, no, no. And I understand. I think as a fan, and this is a good sort of natural way to lean because you want to give the players the benefit of the doubt. I think as fans, we think when stuff isn't working, the first thing we think of, except for the quarterback, I don't, everyone seems to be totally fine with saying the quarterback's doing the wrong things, but the rest of the, the players, you tend to think, oh, they've got to be doing things right. So it must be the wrong call. Like, I think people have this, that's where they jump to. Um, they don't want to blame the, the quarterback is the most visible to them. So if they, yeah. if, you know, quarterback misses an open receiver, your casual sure. fan can see that, right? Yeah. They're the not casual they're fans not. usually not seeing that we're not doing a good job of getting our two on ones from the yeah. one technique up to yeah. the middle linebacker. You're right. right. You're right. And and I'm not even saying that the casual fan should be looking at that or should know what to look at. I just am trying to identify why a lot of people think this way. And so you're right. Like when people are watching a play develop, they're looking at Spencer with the ball in his hands and not unless it's just absolutely blatant. They're not looking at all five offensive line positions at the same time and saying, oh, yeah, we all picked up our guy, right? Like, we all did what we were supposed to. And I think what you saw, not just this week against Purdue, but last week against Northwestern was when we have guys execute what they are supposed to do on a play, holy shit, it works. <laughs> holy shit, now it looks like we're running plays that we haven't here's the here's the answer to your question are we running plays that we haven't run yes we're we're running them correctly we're we're completing and executing them um we're doing them right the the call was the same but it does look different on the field um and is it all in the players no it's you know there's an offensive coordinator for a reason there's a scheme for a reason but clearly things look and work better and then kevin drake you can speak to this too but hey now we've got a little passing game. Defense backs off a little bit. And oh shit, let's hand it off to Caleb Johnson. And now there's I room still to don't run. Know that we have too much of a passing game outside of our tight end passing game. That's that's a good point. Honestly. Let's be honest. We we ran the ball well and threw it to our tight ends well. Between, and we played well on defense. Between Nico and our tight ends, 
That's uh, I forgot where... about Nico. He had a pretty good game. Yeah. Yeah. Between Nico and our tight ends, that's about where our passing attack stops. But hey, at this it's point, something. it moved it's... the ball. You're right. You're right. Um, take a drink. Um, anything else that's uh, uh that that uh stood out to you guys? It was very fun to not lose to Purdue. Love that. Love that. Love not playing David Bell. You know, Kevin mentioned David Bell wasn't there. I tweeted about it. Uh, I tried to be funny. I think some people got it. I said this was clearly a David Bell issue. Boy, is it nice to not have him. I mean, Charlie, arguably, without scoring, had a similar day. Not really, though, because I don't think they threw the ball to David Bell 20 times. If you look at Charlie's yards per target, I think it ends up being a pretty inefficient offense. I agree. I would. That's he had, he had one, they, they had one big play to him for like thirty something yards, and that he had that's he had a, a couple point. of nice catches. I'm not gonna lie, but the the amount of the offense that flows through him, dude. I, if he didn't have twenty five targets, I'm gonna be surprised. It it was less than that. It was close probably to close twenty to, though. It was probably close to twenty. I think. I, um, I could check. Interesting stat that got posted in the. I mean, it's on Twitter, but also in the Discord is Charlie Jones now zero for three. Kevin, you sent me this. He's, <laughs> 0 for th- he's 0 for 3 when Iowa plays Purdue. And he's played he's played for both teams. Um, so that's tough. <laughs> it's just, you know. He's, you know, he's probably still happy with the production he's putting out there this year. He's really given himself a chance to to see the next level. Um did we see, did you guys catch the uh the clip of Cooper? Going to help him up, and Jack Campbell going, "Hey, buddy, let's just uh, let's just let him get up on his own." Huh? He he had he had no problem just walking out of town on his own, so he can get up his own his own. Nope. I think that that clip of Campbell pulling Cooper away is some. Tell of me the that be- didn't scream Josie Jewel to you. Oh, oh fuck yeah. I didn't even I didn't even think of anything other than Josie because I didn't see it. But as you guys are saying this, I'm just thinking about Josie. I thought Josie was back on the team. I can hear Josie going, no, no, no. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> In like his funny little way. Um, I think that that clip specifically, because we all know Jack is, I mean, he is a football player. He is respectful. He's one of the nicest dudes you'll ever meet. He's he is not in any way uh, malicious towards opposing player. I mean, the way he plays is a little bit malicious sometimes. But um, you know, he will fuck you up. He you don't want to run into him. But uh, I think that is some of the best gamesmanship I've ever seen. Like the most, you know, like the true. This is what sports is about. Like, nah, fuck him. Let him get up. He'll be fine. He'll he'll probably respect it and. Uh, and like, you know, this is football. I loved it. I, I gotta imagine this was um uh, this is this is one that the coaching staff really, really wanted and the fan base mm. as well, that you could just put your feet up afterwards and just kind of enjoy. Enjoy that cathartic. A bit. Cathartic, very cathartic. Um I think Drake, you said something in our group chat while the game was happening, like what the fuck is going on or whatever. And I said, you know what? If this is the way this game ends up, and it did, although the second half was basically like, "Hey, let's run this fucking we clock were up out." Twenty-one to three, and I was like, "What is going on? Am I in a hyper vortex? Did I yeah. come out on a different planet?" And I was like, "You know what? This was the week, if any, for this to happen. Like against Charlie Jones, against a team who has had our number for for the last five years, a week to get two in a row." This was a cathartic week. Was this the uh, was it the same score that we beat that they beat us by last year when we were number two? Was it twenty four to three or is it? Uh, I believe. Um, yeah, it was the twenty twenty one score when they embarrassed us? Let me take a look. Iowa versus Purdue twenty twenty one. It was twenty four to seven. Twenty four to seven. Ah. Twenty four to seven. That one hurt. I remember watching that one, and that one hurt. Um, that was an ugly one to watch, but um, I, this one felt really good. I think this almost knocks them out of contention for the West. Uh, no, they got they got Illinois next week, so they're still in it, I guess. 
Yeah, so um, that actually brings me to the conversation because, hey, like Spencer said, we had him dead. We had him buried in the ground. I mean, you can even clip me saying, I think in the, uh, it was either pre-Ohio State or after Ohio State. You can clip me saying, hey, I knew this was the fucking way the season was going to go once we lost to Illinois. Now, you can also clip me saying a ton that every game on the schedule past Ohio State was winnable. Um, so I don't think I had him totally dead and buried myself. I had him dead. But thank you, I, <laughs> thank you for I had him. <laughs> I, I had him. If they had a heart rate monitor, you know, the they're they're sitting on the hospital bed and they got that heart rate monitor on the computer screen. Boy, that some bitch was getting low. It was getting few and far between. So we take a look at the West now, and holy shit, Iowa's in second place. <laughs> I mean, what is going on? Uh, and that may speak to the West. Illinois being- and Minnesota both lost, right? Minnesota ended up beating Nebraska. Oh, they Minnesota. did end up winning. But Absolutely. Illinois did end up losing to a Michigan State team, which I was really surprised oh, by. I was, I was a little shocked by that. Yeah. Um, Mel Tucker, $100 million man. Unbelievable. Uh, so here's what we're looking at in the West now. Illinois sits atop at 4-2 and two with a head-to-head win over Iowa, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. They play Purdue this upcoming week. If they beat Purdue, it is like almost guaranteed to go unless they somehow drop the ball versus Northwestern. Correct. So their final three games are at Purdue home against Michigan at Northwestern. They have to lose two of those three and Iowa has to win out for Iowa to be the West champion. Those are the two things that need to happen. You, we do not care about any other team because the other teams are the ones that we're about to play. We just beat Purdue. Wisconsin's right there. We play them this week. Minnesota is after that. We play them the week after that. So if we win out and we are eight and four and we end up five and three in the conference, or is it, is it five and three or we would be six and three. Six and three. Six and three in the conference. And Illinois can find a way to lose to Purdue, Michigan, or Northwestern two out of three times. Not, not un, super unprobable, right? V- likely that they lose to Michigan. Likely that they lose to Michigan. So they really have to and just I find can, a way. I could see, I could see them dropping a game to Purdue, especially if Purdue has a good bounce back game. And you know what? Northwestern rivalry game, rivalry they game, played Ohio State tough. You never yep. know what's going to happen. They could very easily drop two of these three. Now, Iowa still has to go get it done, but other than any other time, compared to any other time this season, I think we've got the most confidence in Iowa right now. Um, I mean, it's it's the same as we said two weeks ago after the Ohio State game. Every game the rest of the year was winnable or losable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, do you guys know what the line is for this week? I believe I saw it come out at like Iowa minus a point and a half. Iowa minus one. So it's a, it's in a blacked out Kinnick. Is it blackout this weekend? It's blackout. Now here's the deal. Uh, I saw the forecast drop to 31 degrees in snow. Is that That's still, chilly. yeah, I don't like that. Is there going to be heaters at the tailgate? Yeah, it's called a, a nice beer. You drink enough of them. No, you don't feel no, Kevin. No, yep. uh-huh. I'm asking: uh-huh. Are there going to be heaters that use propane to blow heat on me? You know, I don't, I don't want... know what you, what, why you want people blowing on you and stuff at the tailgate. Uh, I mean, take that somewhere else. Not, not how do you not, not? Why? How do you not understand that? You don't want people. I'm you don't, just you don't want to get yeah, there. Probably, the there'll tailgate. probably be some some propane heaters there. Yeah. Okay. Well, a little nice tent set up. Yeah. I would enjoy that. Um, I don't want the inside warm. I don't want to have to liquid warm myself. Uh, right now on my phone, it says Saturday in Iowa City will be partly cloudy with a high of 32. I do not see snow. It's going to be cold. Didn't eat a bunch of mushrooms. The cold doesn't really affect you. Okay. 
Iowa City tailgate Wisconsin game probably not a good time to do psychedelics time. for the first time. time. Well, probably not for the first time though, right? Um, so that's what the West looks like. Uh, Northwestern is trash. Although, hey boys and girls, lock of the weekend, thirty eight and a half points. My ass. Come on, Wildcats. Now, was it the only bet that hit out of my three? Yes. Am I trash at picking football games, both in the college and NFL? Yes. Did I lay some confidence down on Kevin's Michigan minus 26 and get a little bit scared, but then they all of a sudden came back and won me some money last night? Yes, I did. Let's run over those picks real quick. And shout out to the Picket app. You guys know, uh, over the weekend, our boy Jimbo, you guys remember Jimmy, who won the $250? Shout we got him Jimbo. sent. He got, he, uh, listen to this. And this is shout out to the boys at Pickett, because Pickett made this happen. P-I-K-K-I-T. We're partnering with them now. Shout out to them as a sponsor. Pickett was like, hey, we're going to give $250 to a walk-on listener. Turns out that it's Jimbo, right? This guy, Jim. He goes, boys, just got the news that I won. Love it. I send him the money. We have a little bit of conversation. Jim goes, I'm laying some of this down on the Iowa money line today. Love it. And he hits boys and girls. Pick it, making it happen. Let's go. Come on now. Um, pick it is a sports bet betting aggregation app. And if you guys haven't been on board yet, uh, then you're kind of missing out. It is, if you use more than one sports betting app, you absolutely need this because it aggregates all your bets in one place. You don't have to individually log in to all your betting accounts. It also will tell you in a super easy user interface how many units, how much money you got down, uh, how many bets you have out there. It brings in all of the events, all of the games into a live feed where you can just scroll and see all the scores of all the games that you're betting on. It's your own custom. It's honestly sick. Um and they let Jimbo win 250, and then he turned some of that into some more. So shout out to them. Uh, code walk on at sign up. W A L K O N walk on. Um, you guys, uh, you guys got a Powerball ticket? No, but I'm gonna freaking buy one this week. That's, That's for damn some sure. bitch. Holy shit, that thing is going high. Now there was a. This could be our next top five, and I don't know. We don't have to do it tonight. Because I, I do kind of like to prep for a top five. Wait, we're not doing a top five tonight? Should we do it? Should we just go an impromptu yeah, what the fuck top did five? I show up for? Because the Hawks are scoring points. They're winning games. Yeah, the people... I'm here for the top fives, baby. I'm here for the hang. Okay, well, then let's do a top five. It'll be impromptu. It'll be a little less programmed. Top five things you're buying with the with, wa- winning with, lotto ticket. Correct. And it and I want to I want to take away house and I want to take away stocks because those are like the obvious like uh, yeah. Well, now what am I going to buy? I want I want I want the what do they call it? I don't even know like a the tangible thing. uh, What items that asset? Yeah, I I want stuff that's just like luxury spend. Like a it's it's for pure pleasure. Top five things that you would buy. So can can I say like. Uh, no, you Manhattan can't say drugs. Penthouse. A what? A Manhattan penthouse. Like a a, a penthouse in Manhattan. 100 sure. stories up, overlooking the whole city. That's a luxury. Why, why can't you say penthouse, time. but I can't say house house? I think that, obviously, you're going to buy your forever house a on a piece of land. A mansion. And absolutely. I'm going to buy like a state worth of land. And you're going to buy a state. Everyone. You can go buy Rhode Island? It's probably nah. You could get a bunch of land in Oklahoma pretty cheap. You could get a bunch of sure. land in Mon- Montana. Montana. You could probably buy Muscle Shell County. No, literally, all the billionaires are buying up land in Montana right now. Go look at some of the ranches out there. They're insane. Well, you would be uh you would you would have a lot of money. Well, yeah, I understand that. I'm just saying, like, yeah, it's a it's a popular thing to do these days if you're a rich white man with a lot of money. Absolutely. So think on it for a second. Uh Kev, I don't want to skip over your picks. Um, because two out of three, right? Two out of three, two out of three. And it should have been three out of three. That should have been get this. All right. So Duke's up 
10. I mean, this I was bad. Minus, Me and Kev were nine and a half right? during this. Bad beat. Bad beat. Austin College gets the ball with two minutes left. They march down the field. They kick like a 38 yard field goal on second down with 17 seconds left. Unbelievable. Right? Oh, I'm like, that's, oh my God. You know what that's like, kill me now? You know what that's like, Kev? It's like uh, in the NCAA tournament when you're betting like, uh, like Middle Tennessee against North Carolina and the line's like 28 and a half and middle and North Carolina is up 30 and middle Tennessee throws in a half quarter at the buzzer mm-hmm. to lose by 27 and it doesn't cover. That's what, that's what a field goal on second down to lose. Yeah, by seven. I can understand it, right? You take the three, you get the onside kick, you throw the hill, Mary. I understand the logic of it, but Oh my God, it's just, that hurts. It hurt. It hurt. It hurt real bad. So the parlay was dead before it got its feet off the ground. Tulane had them at minus seven and a half. They went 27 13 at Tulsa. And Michigan survives a first half scare. They were down 17 14 at one point. They end up covering the 26 52 to 17. So two for three. That game, right up until they picked it off and then just absolutely started dominating Rutgers, was interesting. Rutgers was trying to make it an interesting one. The first half was interesting. Yeah. And then it was, it was unbelievable started playing like Michigan in the second half. And Tulane's I, a good I, team this year, huh? Michigan is playing good football. Yeah. I said Tulane too. Tulane's a good team. Oh, oh yeah. Tulane's a good team. Yeah. 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 Tulane is on track to be in a New Year's Six Bowl. Pretty cool. Wow. And Drake, did you like what I did with your um with you this week on the on the on the graphic there? Absolutely sensational. I'm leaving it there. You are now just Jesus to the people. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so as we mentioned in previous weeks, uh, this is a one and two podcast. Now, Kevin really tried to turn that around this week. I, however, um, I am right there again. Northwestern, who I got a, a ton of shit for the other day, covers by a million. And they happen to be the only team that does it for me. Texas Tech TCU. Shout out to TCU. I don't know if they're any good or not. I I still feel like they're going to get beat by one of their last three opponents on the regular season here. Um, They win against Texas tech. They do not go over no, um, not enough points in that game for me. And uh, Tennessee basically got um, Khabib by Georgia, Um, Georgia. That defense is legit. That defense must have felt super disrespected by yep. getting dropped in the rankings, and they came out and proved their worth. Man, and them, they their corners are some dogs. And Stetson their Bennett their tackles are some dogs. Stetson you Bennett see, is. You see the thing about Stetson Bennett and his phone, and, and they were calling him all night. Yeah, and then on the fucking first touch touchdown celebration, he's like, "Fuck oh, yeah, they'd be like call like." Dude, that team that they got swag. They've got more athletes than you. They've got they've got everything. Georgia's better than you at football. If you're the other team, Georgia's better. That's just it just is the way it is. And it's just it's just crazy. I mean, you you watch them play yesterday and you're like there's no team in the country that can beat these guys. And a month ago, Mizzou had him on the ropes. I know they should have won. Unbelievable! Right. It is crazy. Um, but if they play like that, they'll they'll be national champions for sure. Yeah, Tennessee. I, I who who do you think could compete with them? Nobody. <sighs> I mean, it have to be Ohio State. I was gonna say if Ohio State has a good offensive day, and they've just got gotta a chance. hope that Ohio State can make it a shootout. Yeah, I I, I think I agree. I think Ohio State's the only one with a real chance. I think Michigan could knock off Ohio State, though. But I don't think I Michigan matches up against Georgia. I think Michigan Yo, gets trounced by Georgia. Dude, the the Ohio State Michigan game this year is going to be sick. I mean, it's sick a lot of years, but it's going to be good this year. Anyway, Tennessee Imagine plus they're eight. Both undefeated. They're going to be. Yeah, probably going to be. Um, that's badass. Tennessee right. <laughs> plus eight and a half was my last pick. It did not hit. Uh, I think they lost by like three touchdowns or something like that. 27-13 um, final. Yeah. So two scores. Um, okay. 55 minutes in. Might as well cap this thing off with the top five. So um, let's play a little game. You win the Powerball. 
It's $1.6 billion. Now, you're probably going to take that in a lump sum because 1.6 is the, uh, I believe it's like the estimated it's over It's going to be 1.9 now. Holy shit. It's going to be $1.9 billion. That's the estimate now after, after, after no winner for the 1.5. Yeah. Oh, my God. So rule of thumb is take it. Take take the big number, take a third of it after the lump sum and then taxes. So right. call it eight hundred, call it seven hundred to eight hundred million dollars. Okay, so you get seven hundred million dollars. <laughs> Just even saying it is so stupid. It's so stupid. The fact that somebody is going to win that. Oh my god. Well, this is what the washed up walk ons LLC should do: is secure a loan and buy every possible combination and will still be profitable as long as nobody else wins it, it costs like oh man is that true yeah. yes because it's like to get 300 million time. combinations at two dollars a piece so it costs you like 600 million dollars and <laughs> so we'd make a hundred million as long as nobody else had the if right no combo. if someone else wins then you're fucked right because now you're splitting 700 million and now we're down 250 mil <laughs> yes Holy shit. Um, okay, I don't think we're going to find somebody to give the Wash Up Walk-Ons Partnership LLC a $600 million. Also, I think the logistically buying that many combinations would take a long time. Like, Imagine having 300 million tickets. No, you just call Powerball and say... They're not going to let you do that. I want... 300 million tickets, please. <laughs> Give me every <laughs> I want them all to be different combinations. Oh shit. I think um, I think I don't can you buy lottery tickets online? You probably can't, can you? I don't I don't think so. I think if it's so, all... you, like you you would need like some sort of supercomputer to do it. Right. So wash up walk-ons wins. And we now have seven hundred million. Nah, dollars. give it a billion. Just tell tell me I got a billion to play. Okay, you've got a billy. It's like there's a difference anyway. You've now there got a, you've now got a billy in your pocket, in your digital pocket. What's the first thing you buy outside of, you know? So you, are we going number five, or are we going starting at the big boy? I guess. I, I think I think we gotta start from number one down because otherwise yeah. my my order is gonna be fucked up in my head. Yeah, 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 yeah. So start with number. Start with the first thing you'd buy. Private jet. I no private. Yep, it was gonna be private jet for me as well. I'm buying an F-18. <laughs> that can be your private jet. I am buying an F-18, and I, I, am I think you're gonna be down. Docked. A significant amount of your of your budget already on an F eighteen. Now let me get a three hundred million, three hundred million. Drake's gonna buy a warp. A warp. I'm fucking weak. All right, Drake, you're already down sixty five million dollars. That's it. That is it. He's gonna buy Drake's five of them now. Drake's like, buy me Manhattan, three. I want three. my Manhattan penthouse is gonna cost me more than that. I don't think so. I don't think oh, so. I yeah. don't think look, up, look at the property values of Manhattan penthouses. The most expensive I, I don't, I don't know. Dollars. I think like the the most expensive real estate ever sold was what less than less than a hundred. No, oh, no, no, no. Oh no, 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 Kev. This here says the world's highest apartment is on sale for 250 million. Whoopsies. But that that's probably in the Burj Khalifa, huh? No, it says this penthouse, which hovers 1,400 feet above Central Park, is also ah. Manhattan's most expensive listing. Oh! oh. That's stupid. Oh, my God, dude. It is stupid nice. Yeah, and Jesus. I want you to know that that is purchase number two. Wow. Is that specific penthouse? That specific. I want the most baller penthouse in all of Manhattan because I am him. <laughs> And I like I'm that. Gonna, and I'm going to fly my F-18 right over the fucking Hudson. Let them know daddy's home. Well, they're going to think it's another Sully situation. There's a guy. <laughs> there's Drake landing his F-18 in the, in the Hudson. River. Dude, speaking of this, I, I forgot to tell you guys. There was a dude the other day. as I So I like to order dinner and then drive at dusk because the sky is just so incredible out here. And uh, so I go pick my dinner up at dusk. This guy, I saw him, he, 
perfect spot to do it over a massive field, mountains in the background, dusk sky. He's sitting on like what looks like a lawn chair with an airboat propeller strapped to his back and a parachute. And he was just zooming around like he was actually flying a single man, like motorized parachute. I don't even I know. Saw, it was I the saw, most amazing thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I saw it on your story and I was like, wow, that is, that's something. It was incredible. Um, so Drake's buying an F-18 and then a Manhattan penthouse and he's now down about $315 million. Um, Congratulations, but don't Drake. forget, I got a Vin Beasel, baby. You got seven hundred million. No, don't change the rules. You, you're no, halfway. No, no, no. You're halfway Chris. done. With Hoover the property Andy taxes, Andy. you are bankrupt in about five years right now. No, 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 <laughs> no. True. Um, I think private jet is number one for me, and it would be for the reason to because I tried to try to sell plane sucks. Well, yeah, that, but I tried to sell Lauren on this the other day. I was like, I'll just fly to Iowa City once a week and I'll record with Kevin and then I'd fly back and we could actually do the podcast in person. And she's right, like, you look like an hour and a half away. Yeah, but if I fly, it's like 15 minutes. It's not 15 <laughs> minutes. It's like four. And if I'm in your F-18. Yeah, it's two, we're it's taking two. the F-18, Bubba. I'll pick you up. <laughs> so it's going to be a private jet. Um, but from there, I don't know what I could buy. Like it, other than a yacht or like some of this stupid no, no, no. shit. You don't want a boat. You don't want a boat. Says who? Give me boat okay. number two. Big ass yacht. No. Where are you? Where Where is your boat? No. Because now your money's all the way gone, Kevin. You just sunk your money. No, you can get a yacht. Says the guy it. who bought a $250 million penthouse yeah, in no, your city in America. Blow me. If if I'm being honest, I want I want the hundred million one, and I just want it because every day I want to just see that. View. Oh, so we're so we're changing up the numbers now. He's like he ran the numbers. He's like, oh well, no, shit, no, no. we're running out you, of money. Give me the Hoover told me before. No, no, no. Before we started this list, I said, Kluver, give me a billion to play with, and he said, cool, make it a billion, just for shits and giggles, make it a billion. So that's what Kluver said. So I was playing well, with Kluver is wrong because if, if you're you taking win the lotto, away you're not getting a billion, you're getting like 700 million. If that, so if you're taking away 300 million, yeah, I'm going to downsize my penthouse a little bit. Cause it's still going to be baller. It's true. All right. All right. <clears throat> like, you know, all poor only buying the hundred million dollar penthouse. You took away 300 billion of my play money so, or 300 million of my play money. Well, Kluver changed the prompt. Okay, so I'm getting blamed for this. Uh, this conversation is going fucking south in a minute. Um, so I am probably going to buy s some sort of residence in s overseas, like Spain, maybe Italy. Like I want to Greece. Greece somewhere over there. I want to be able to sit like high above the land, look out onto the water, and eat like a king. Like I want to eat pasta and just like just bask in the sun. I want, I want property over there and I want it to be expensive, you know, like something nice. I don't know if it's Italy. I don't know if it's Greece, but I want like foreign property and that would be my number two. So kind of going along with that. Um, my, my, my number three, I think would be like budgeting, like, 20 million a year just on travel and expenses yeah. and shit like yep. that. So you can just travel the world. hundred percent. I, I don't, I don't know what you call that, but I'm with you on that. And that was, I, I, like, I don't know what to call that either. It's not a physical tangible because, good that I'm buying. It's yeah. Just, because, well, because you know, I think all three, of, all three of us would probably prefer to spend it on experience rather than boys and girls. I'm just spending the money on jet fuel and flying my F 18 wherever I want to go. You with an F-18. <laughs> you drink just in an F-18. <laughs> uh, the operating cost for a jet an F-18 per hour is also something ridiculous. It is obscene. Yeah. But I can um, get there in a hurry. Yeah, you can. Um, I don't know if we're on. So if that was your number three, Kev, is that your number three? Yeah. Drake, number three. do you have a number three? I'm buying a custom Rolls Royce. Okay. 
I like that. My, I, I was going to put a car on there as well. Um, my number three was probably going to be some kind of car. The problem is, is I'm not really a car guy. I'm so, not a car um, guy either. I'm probably going to stick with my Tahoe. <laughs> Tahoe's are nice trucks, man. It's a comfy car, man. I'm, can you at least soup it up? Can you put a, you know, uh, can you put- I'll, I'll probably get it detailed for like a hundred bucks. I don't know. <laughs> I'll get it. Well, I'll definitely get an oil change. I mean, fuck yeah. I'm, ro- <laughs> yeah. I'm ro- you, if, you, if you don't think I'm rotating them tires, boy, you're gonna I'm finally ro- replace the dented hood from the hail two years ago. Yeah, that's tough. Um, I'd probably go to Drake, Drake, and be like, "Yo, what's a sick car that I could buy?" And then he would tell me, and I'd just buy that car. Um, just for shits and gigs, and it's not even gonna put a dent. Shout out Crystalia, dent in the uh, in the account. Um, uh, number five is gonna be that travel expense for me, so I'll just put that on on the back end of the list. Is there a number four for you, Kevin? Um, yeah, I I think now now you, you screwed up the prompt already, but like, so you you're saying I already have like a big ass house somewhere? I'm saying that. Because otherwise you're throwing off my order if, if Drake's buying penthouses, but I can't buy a house. No, I think that it's very clear that you're going to probably, most people are going to either buy land and buy a house um, or buy land and build their dream house that they're going to have as their main residence for the rest of their life. And so I was going to take that off because that was going to be a clear one of the five for all of us. Now, a, a, a Manhattan penthouse, that's more like, you know, Fast Drake goes, forward. yeah, you go and hang out I there, go for there when I want to wake up in Manhattan and look at central park in the morning, Right, but it's not his permanent residence. Um, because in if, if we're F 18, well, yeah, you could land that on the roof. Um, who that'd be a tough landing. Wouldn't it Gotta <laughs> stick that one pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Kev, so, uh, if you want to, if you want to just say like a permanent residence, build your dream house, then you can say that too. Well, yeah, I mean it's going to be in a, you know, ten thousand acre ranch out in Montana. Mm-hmm. You gonna have some buffaloes out there, and that's going to be number one. Private, okay. private jets, number, you know, everything, bump everything else out. down the list. Yeah, yeah. Um, the last one on my list, uh, because this is number four, but I'm I'm putting the travel expense and and budget on, at number five, um, is for the boys. I am buying or building probably uh, I'm building us a studio gym and it is fully decked out. And I know it's not even going to make a dent in the, in the money because you could spend it's funny a couple you say that because my, my next one was uh, the, the fantasy factory dream factory yep. for all the bros. Yep. You got, you got paintball, you got airsoft, you got any game you could possibly want. You yep. got MMA gym, you got weights, you got, Everything you got the Dan Bilzerian padded room where you can skydive onto those massive pillows, dude. You're I'm talking everything. Yeah. This this was this was my number five as well. Is it was a, a gym with everything. I'm talking swimming pool, talking oh, football yeah. field, basketball court. Like Drake said, I want a paintball arena, trampoline I park. Want, <laughs> I want a boxing ring. We we want an octagon in there. I want some mats we can roll around in. It's uh weight room bigger than the Iowa weight room facility yes. with, with all the, you know, with all the snacks, with all oh. the snacks, full refueling station and yeah. an intern attendant. Uh, I want the USACA bars for, for, to make my Olympic lifts go up by 10% overnight. I want it all. Yeah. And, and uh, a part of this is going to be a fully decked out, kitted, branded out, washed up walk-ons official studio where we can record podcasts and actual content. And okay, like, so so if one of us, all right, let's go around in a corner in, in a circle here. Um, if one of us circle. buys the winning ticket, uh, Drake, are you still doing this podcast? Probably, man. And it's just because of Dickhead Tuesday. Clue, are you still doing this podcast? Oof. Uh, it might go down to once a week. <laughs> Dickhead Tuesday. No. Because here's the deal. Down. Here's the deal. Think about how cool. Now think about this because this is what I put in the Discord. Having it having in studio would be. Think about how cool of a brand we can suddenly become and the shit that we could do with those resources. I mean, we now have. You got to have hobbies. We now have way more. 
than Pat McAfee money, right? And we hire a few more of the boys. We get Bo to quit his job. We're now all full time just content ah, producers. Shit. You know what? I always told myself, scratch my number one. I'm sorry. There's someone fucking around outside my house right now. Uh, <laughs> scratch my number one. You need to get the. Strap. I've always told myself I win the lottery. I'm buying a big ass neighborhood for the boys, and everybody gets a house. Okay, <laughs> you like get that. a house. You get a house. Kevin that turns into Oprah. Ass. Um, yeah, no. Uh, the idea was that we donate so much money of the money we win to the children's hospital that there's now a wing or no, a, no, no, a no, 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 no. It's the washed up walk-ons children's hospital. <laughs> it's just sorry, Stead family, but. Oops, we gave yeah. more or nanny we, nanny boo boo. Or or hey, or hey, we 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 implement plans to build a second tower that now sits next to the other tower. And it's the and it's just a little bit bigger. It's just two or three floors higher, and it's the washed up walk ons children's hospital named after us. And then we also donate just a significant portion to the NIL fund for the athletes, and we just dominate. You Oops. know, like a shitload of money um you know enough for like a good 10 or 20 years of nil <sighs> and then after that, that we'd be build satisfying it. though say, and say then you we give, just take massive futures bets say out you give a hundred mil to the nil fund and yeah. we are giving every five star in the country we're offering them five mil a year to come play at iowa yeah and we go and we win every game by 60 for the next four years and it's because of satisfying us. anymore though yeah, I don't because know. I, I bet the Hawks national champs in 2028. And <laughs> now I'm doing it all over again because I got another biscuit. <laughs> and Drake just won, won another good. biscuit. You know what, Drake? That's a next level play right there. Good yeah. for you. Yeah, you yeah, still yeah. got so, some brain cells left. <laughs> not many. Um, so that was it. The uh, The Hawks are... Let us know what you would do with your uh, with your billion, by the way. So the Hawks are uh, are five and four. They're not dead. They've got three games left. The Badgers come to town. The bowl is on the line, and the Hawks are hungry. I think I think the Hawks are hungry. The Hawks are, are ready to go to battle for that thing in the cold weather. Um, and we got a chance to make a little run at eight and four here and and, and turn the season around. I love it. Uh, shout out to Brady. Well, Ross. Just imagine. Just imagine. For a sec, I'm sorry you're trying to wrap this thing up. Just imagine that we pulled out that Illinois game, and we're six and three right now, and in the driver's seat of the West. Just how how different this this year is, and the, the whole narrative around it too. Yeah, it'd be unbelievable. It's it's you're right. Game of what ifs. Regardless, here we are, five and four. Um, we will talk to you on Wednesday in three sixty seven. Jesus Christ podcast you're right maybe we wouldn't do this podcast if we want all that money um that's it talk to you then peace peace